Welcome to this mock review. So this is a bit of an older mock that I've made. It depicts the scene from Iron Man 2 where War Machine and Iron Man fight all of the hammer drones. So I actually built this all the way back in 2018. So it's a bit of an older mock that I've made and I probably will redo it in the future. I needed some of the pieces that are currently in this mock for something else that I'm working on at the moment. So I figured before I take this apart, I may as well do a video on this and show you the process behind building this, as well as some of the techniques, instructions on certain parts of this mock, and much more. So let's get started. So here's the mock itself. The original inspiration for this mock was using some of these spring green 1x2 plates. Now I actually got some of these in a lug bulk order and I got about 200 of them. And so I wanted to put them to good use and use them for some really pretty looking landscape. I also thought it would work well to just give my Iron Man and War Machine figures a home, which I always like to do. It's nice to just not display your figures and to put them in mocks. So just with all of that combined, the impetus for this mock just kind of happened. I think it's always great fun to experiment with new colors when you build, and I highly recommend you do the same. So let's start off with the landscape where we did in fact use those spring green 1x2 plates. When we flip the mock upside down, we can see that it's using an array of sort of larger plates here. And then I placed all the spring green plates on top to link all of these larger plates together. Now sure, I could have just used a regular base plate and built on top of that, but I often find when you use a regular base plate, you're limited to that specific square or the specific dimensions of the base plate you're building on. Whereas when you build like this, you can be a little bit more unique and kind of tailor your design to look exactly how you want it to. And I personally prefer to build that way. Plus base plates are expensive, you know? Who wants to build on a base plate? Nah, it's cool to build on base plates, but you know, you know what I mean. Let's cut over now to the waterfall design. So I made this first by building up the sort of rocky mountain. Then I put some of those medium blue plates down. And on top of that, I put some of those translucent uh, plate pieces as well for it to kind of simulate water. After that, I built a very slight overhang of some of these trans clear plates so that the waterfall could look like it's cascading down. Then I built a separate panel and added some snot bricks into the side of the mountain here so that I can simply just sort of slot in this additional plate here and then it kind of gives it that sort of flowing down water effect and it emulates a real waterfall. Then after that it was just about adding in more water below with those trans clear plates for it to mimic how a real waterfall would look and also just sort of shaping the rock work around everything so that the waterfall looks natural and realistic. Now here's a quick breakdown of how I built this wooden bridge. So it requires a lot of brown flex tubing. And from here, I use some of these black clip pieces to attach some one by one reddish brown cylinders. Then these two halves were connected together, linking them with some Technic pins. And the bridge just sort of sits nicely on top. It's a relatively simple and straightforward design. And uh, I think sort of the key element here, of course, is that flex tubing. It's such a helpful piece and it's uh, a beautiful thing because you can bend it to your will, move it around, do all sorts of craziness with it. So you can really achieve some interesting angles when you're building with it. So a piece I definitely recommend you get if you don't have any. Another use for that flex tubing is to create some of these tree designs. These are literally just some of the leaf pieces with the flex tubing. It's a very simple design, but it gets the job done. It's also easy enough to bend the flex tube to get the branches to bend in some interesting ways. One trick that I didn't actually do on this mock, but I think it's still a really smart idea, is to find some really small thin wiring that you can feed through the flex tube. And then when you bend it, the flex tube will stay in place and not move. Yes, it does require you to use non-Lego wire, but it still looks nice. Now, as for the drones that I used in this mock, I understand they're a little bit big. 2008 Ben thought it was fine, but eh, it's not really to scale, is it? Regardless, if you like the look of these drones and you want to build your own, I have a full breakdown and sort of set of instructions there on a separate YouTube video. There's a link in the description below to that video if you want to check it out and build those drones yourself. So that's the basics of this mock here. I'm going to include a few other images of me breaking this mock apart so you can see how some of the rock work was built and a few other sort of areas of this mock, how it was done. If you're interested in a few more sort of like landscape techniques and other different things, I have other videos on the channel that uh, go into a little bit more detail and insight about building things like rock work, brick textures, landscapes, water techniques, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so be sure to check out the channel and see some of the other videos if you're looking for further inspiration on building mocks. Something else that's important to note are that I made sure to put some more rocks sort of scattered throughout the grass here because in the real world it's rare to see a big hill or mountain and then just kind of blank landscape around it. Rocks are often sort of scattered around larger mountains or rock faces and things like that. And so I wanted to reflect that on this mock here. And I tend to do that whenever I build landscape. I try to find as many ways as possible to reflect the real world and how landscape actually works in the real world. I always do my best to reflect that. Realism is key. 
So that's it for this mock. Hopefully I gave you a little bit of inspiration if you want to build something similar or some of the techniques and things discussed in here can give you some ideas for your own future creations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next mock review.